how do you get people to your art show or your art exhibit? And once you get them there, how do you give them a memorable experience? And how do you get them to buy art? I really love this topic because I have put on numerous art exhibits and I feel like I've figured out a lot of this stuff, although I still, I still have a few more things to learn. Begin with a meaningful exhibit. Now it doesn't have to be earth shattering, but it should be a cohesive purpose. And what would that purpose be? It could be black and whites of the desert, or it could be a recent, um, a recent exhibit that a friend of mine, Larry Beard, who is a amazing photographer, he did a show, he did an exhibit. He had gone out to Tahiti and photographed whales. So that's what his whole exhibit was about. So it could be, um, or it could be, you know, a particular theme. It could be a particular purpose. It could be a very meaningful purpose. Saving the children, starving children somewhere in Africa. Or it could be uh, showing close-ups of daffodils. You know, but whatever it is, let there be a specific purpose of the exhibit and know what that is. Once you've decided what that purpose is, take the time to write out a very concise description of it and not a boring textbook style description, but a description where if somebody who had never heard of you or your work read it, they'd be intrigued and it would make them want to go. Why do I want you to take time to write a description? Well, because you will use that for a lot of things. You're gonna use it for your blog posts. You're gonna use it for your advertisements. You're gonna use it for your newsletters. It's going to be the same description no matter who is talking about your show. Because you want to create the narrative around your show. You don't want people to have to guess what it's about or what its meaning is or why it's important. Then, once you have that, and of course, I'm not even gonna talk about the artwork because that's your department <laughs> to figure out what the art's gonna be. Um, once you have the title of the exhibit and a concise description of it, then you can advertise it. You can advertise it on your blog post, through your newsletters, and then this is, to get people there, what you really need to do is hit local newspapers, and local online news media outlets. And the great thing about the online media outlets is they're usually free and people use them to see, you know, there's, there, every town has a different website. Um, I know that when we do events in San Clemente, I'll go on a number of local websites to our town and local to our county. And these websites are, are usually like what's up around town or what's up in Orange County or what's up in Southern California. And you can enter your listing. So when you enter your listing, that's where you're gonna use your handy dandy little description and you're gonna have a name for your exhibit. Also, take the time to write up a press release. And the reason you wanna do this is then you can send this press release to people who actually write for newspapers because they're looking for things to write about. You don't have to be a well-known artist. You don't have to be amazing. You don't have to have a bunch of buyers. There doesn't have to be anything extraordinary other than you're putting on this exhibit and, and there's a purpose for it and um, there are writers out there that are looking for things to write about. So you send the press release out to as many local newspaper writers as you can. In the olden days, we used to fax these things off. I would stand at the fax machine and like fax it to a list of like 20 different newspapers. And out of 20, maybe five would actually 
list it for free and some <clears throat> sometimes we'd get at least one that would want to come and take photos and and tell the story as a news story another thing is if you were doing an exhibit because you want to make money now most artists say well of course i want to make money but but some of you don't really. Some of you just want to show your work. If your livelihood depends on selling art at your exhibits, don't invite your friends to your exhibits. Not unless your friends buy your art. For Drew and me, as much as we love our friends dearly, we don't invite them to our exhibits. To Drew's art exhibits because they don't buy and I don't want to focus on getting non buyers there I don't want a party if I'm there to sell art I avoid the party scene I'm not providing a keg of beer that's a party that's what we call in the surf industry a bro show it's where you invite your bros and they drink all your beer and all your wine and they come for the music. <clears throat> now this might seem boring to you, but Drew and I never have live music for that reason. We don't want people to come for the live music. I want you to come because you want to buy art. In making that decision, we focus on getting art buyers to the exhibit. Now for those of you who have been selling art for a long time, this is a lot easier to do than someone who's never sold their art, sold art before. So right now I'm gonna to talk to those of you who have been selling your art for a few years or longer. Don't invite your friends, invite past buyers, past buyers friends, everyone on your email list, and um, find creative ways to get buyers there. One way to get your past buyers there, and this, this is a secret, so I want you to pay attention to this. You have a special VIP preview one to two hours before the opening time, and only VIPs are invited. Who makes the VIP list? People who have purchased original or expensive pieces from you in the past, and media people, people who were gonna write stories or write a story for the paper or a magazine. The VIP members, you have something special for them and you can create something. So I'll give you an example of something we did. We did an exhibit in Laguna Beach a few years ago. We wanted Drew's collectors to come early so they would get first dibs on any painting they wanted before the general public arrived. So we sent them VIP invites through the mail, like a real invite. And we also called every single one of them and said, hey, you're gonna get an invitation. And some of them, if I didn't have their phone number, I would send them an email. But I really wanted to give them this personal invitation so they'd be more likely to come. And we said, if you come to the VIP preview, we have a little gift for you. We're gonna give you a beautiful art print hand signed by Drew, limited signed and numbered print. Now these were just paper prints on, on fine archival paper. They cost us maybe 10 bucks, worth every penny. We had about, I wanna say like 30 VIPs that we invited and maybe 12 actually showed up. Cause that's kind of how it goes, you know, people are busy or whatever. And out of our VIP people, pretty much they were the ones who bought the art. So you want to treat your VIPs like VIPs. And if you can also have something special, there was another time we did an exhibit where VIPs that showed up early, they got fed sushi. I had sushi for just the VIP people. They never forget that. They'll always remember it. What if you don't have buyers to to invite, like past buyers. Then maybe you could break my rule of inviting friends so you can kind of get um, experience with throwing a show. But I'm telling you, don't turn it into a party. Don't have loads of booze. 
tell people the purpose of this show is this plus you are selling your work make it clear in some way that this work is for sale you could make it clear by saying not only originals are available but also print reproductions you just you just find a way to say it without selling with without being salesy now how do you have and how do, how do you turn the evening into a successful evening now that you've got the people there so the it's the little details that count if you are introverted you're going to have to get over that for your exhibit for one night get over being introverted and i can say that because drew is extremely introverted people meet him they don't really know it but he is when we have an exhibit he just becomes outgoing we make sure that every single person that walks in that door is greeted by either preferably drew and if drew's busy with another person then i will greet them or we will have another person maybe it's the gallery owner maybe it's somebody who's helping us but we make sure not one person walks in that door without being properly greeted warmly and how do you greet someone warmly you say so let's say it's somebody you don't know they saw the ad in the paper and they're coming you see them come in and you say thank you for coming i'm so glad you're here what's your name where are you from how did you hear about it well why don't you come in and have a look around and let me know if you have any questions and then you kind of just guide them in it's really important because you know how awkward it is to walk into an event or a party or an art exhibit where nobody talks to you? It's a terrible feeling to walk in and not be greeted. And I'll tell you, I see this at art exhibits all the time. And it's a, you feel bad. So you don't want anybody that comes to your art exhibit to feel bad. You want them to feel welcome and warm. You also want to make sure that people know who the artist is. So I am a huge proponent of name tags. Doesn't have to be a stick on name. Usually we have one of those tags with a lanyard and Drew will print his art on it and like in the background. So it looks pretty and professional, but it'll have his name Drew, artist. And then I'll wear one and it'll have my name, Maria, and it'll be, uh, my title is often sales. So as people know to talk to me if they want to buy something but the name tag or you could wear a lei around your neck if it's a hawaiian theme or you could wear you know wear something that makes it really clear that you're the artist because if people arrive and they want to meet the artist and they don't know anybody there you want to make it easy for them also have a variety of price points this will help you sell more so you might have big paintings like the one behind me that are priced on the higher end and also have smaller paintings for the person who really wants to buy your art but they can't afford a big one and then have prints so there you've hit like three different price points and if you can come up with like a 10 or 20 dollar item that's ideal because there are people who want to participate and they want to contribute but they can't spend 200 bucks but they can happily spend $20. So if you can hit all those price points, that's awesome. And then another thing is if you paint, let, let's say your pieces of art are really small, I wanna urge you to have at least one really big piece because when someone walks in and there's a wall of tiny pieces, from far away, there's no visual impact. There's no, Dinner. there's no nothing to get them excited because from 20 feet away it looks like a wall with a bunch of postage stamps on it but if you have at least one big painting that catches their eye then it's going to draw them in and then all the other pieces will be then be will, will be viewed so just think impact and then one last tip on this and then we're going to call it a day on this talk don't let anyone leave without thanking them. 
without seeing them at the door. So I know that's hard to do be everywhere at once. That's why it's helpful if you have other people helping you to greet people when they come in and to thank people as they leave. But make it your intention, regardless of whether someone buys or not, that when they leave, they leave there feeling good and feeling happy that they came. I'm happy you guys joined me today. Thank you. And if you want to see any of my live Instagram replay, replays, go to my channel on YouTube. It's real easy to find. Just search my name, look for my channel. And I've been posting these on there and I have a ton of other things that I'm adding as well. Thank you. Have an awesome day.